Hello, and welcome to The Gray Area, where I give interviews with developers, talk about gaming news and reviews, and focus on the interrelationships between gamers. My name is Genesee Gray, and this is the 64th episode in a weekly series called Meet the Team. Here with me is Edmund McMillan, game developer for Team Meet and designer on Super Meat Boy, The Binding of Isaac, and many other games. And Tommy, let's see, Refinus, is that right? Say it again. That was good, that was good. Okay, the programmer for Super Meat Boy and of other games as well. Welcome, you two. Awesome to have you. Hello. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for having us. You are so welcome. It seems like this, this podcast was meant for Team Meat. Yes. With, with it is. It's Meet, comma, the team for you. There you go. There. Okay. Uh, last week's episode was a discussion with Tinsian about MMO multiplayers and EULAs. Please visit www.genesee.com to add to the forum discussion on that topic and to tell me your story. Today is Monday, May 14th, and we're going to discuss some upcoming news, talk about Super Meat Boy the Game for iOS, The Binding of Isaac Expansion, Wrath of the Lamb, and learn more about our guests. So let's start with news of the week. Okay, some news I'd like to share with you guys and see your thoughts. Uh, a game kind of caught my eye this week called Detura. Uh, it's releasing May 8th, so already. It's an abstract release, kind of like Journey, if you've ever played uh, Journey or Flower from that gaming company. And Ars Technica has called it less puzzle exploration and more of a moral Rorschach test you don't always realize you're taking. In other words, you have to make some moral choices in the game, uh, examples of one of them is, do you use your ice pick to chop through the frozen lake and retrieve a golden chalice, or do you save the person pressing their hand against the ice? That sort of thing. So it sounded really interesting to me uh, to kind of kind of make those choices. Have you ever played a game similar to that, or maybe Journey, either of you? I, I played Journey, but I didn't realize there were any of those kind of choices in it. Yeah, I don't think Journey was more moral, but it's sort of a, I don't know, an abstract release is what they're calling it similar in that way. Yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know. Usually with choices like that, when it's it's like a yes or no, like good or bad kind of um, decision thing in a game, it, it's usually a little, like I, like they had very, really basic, uh, you know, like save the little kids and save the girls in Bioshock or kill them or whatever. Right, little sisters. Everybody was like, oh, it's crazy, you know, but really, you know, it wasn't really that crazy. <laughs> Um, and didn't really affect much. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know, it depends on what they do with it. I, I really don't know anything about the game, but it really depends on if it's like, if you are a good guy or a bad guy, and if and how much gray area there is, and what actually changes because of your actions. But um, usually in games that have these, it just seems to be like a yes or no type formula, and if you get a lot of yeses, you're good. If you get a bunch of noes, you're bad, and you get an ending depending on your yes or noes. That's um, true. But... I'm all for anything different. Give nice. me something other than running around and shooting people like that look like soldiers or soldiers in space. <laughs> Understood. Or soldiers, soldiers from the past. Yeah. Or past soldiers. Yeah, past past soldiers. That's right. Now the soldiers have swords. All right. Yeah. Two million, two million players took part in the Diablo 3 stress test that was last month, peaking out at 300,000 users, and the game releases tomorrow, May 15th. I'm so excited. I'm sure that stress test... Technically test... tonight, right? Technically. Yeah, like midnight, isn't it? Yeah. Are you doing that, Tommy? Are you doing that? I'll probably download it. I don't know if I'll play it. I'm <laughs> just going to hold it. I'm, I believe I'm going to be out there. I don't know. I haven't... I'm not 100% positive. I, I think so, though. I think we're going at 12 to the GameStop. Nice. Did, 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 oh, you're like, you're not downloading it? No, I'm going to I'm going to buy it. Well, cuz it's going to take too long. You have like 50 meg per second internet. It'll take like an hour. Yeah, it'll take a lot less time for me to just install it off of the DVD. I guess. You're yeah. Right nice nice R2D2 back there, by the way. Thank you. I finished it. Look at that. It looks pretty good. <laughs> 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 oh, don't don't look at these though. These are my, these are my. Uh, <laughs> yes. What is that? This is uh oh yeah. This is my collection. Uh, all the people who are watching can can envy me here. Look at this, a full collection. These are all the Moxes and a Black Lotus. Yeah. Look at that. Totally legit. Totally real. <laughs> it's not fake. I didn't just put this out for my cube. That's a, that's an uncut sheet. Yeah. Look Cost. at that. We'll sell it. We'll sell it for like thirty grand. <laughs> look at that. That's a Mox. What is that? 
That's a Mox Jet. Yeah, it's a Mox, Mox Jet. Jet. That's a six hundred dollar card right there, and it looks totally real because it is. And he bought it in a storage shed. I just bought it off of auction. It was weird because they were just stuck in my printer when I bought it, <laughs> and I pulled them, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pulled them out. The there was a man with a trench coat. He said, "This is for you." I see yeah, how it is. He was very small. He was in there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move to you guys. What is your news of the week? Personal or gaming, however you want to go. Tommy gave me some news, and I think that's news of the week. Tommy, earlier, the, the Minecraft sales. Oh, yeah, Minecraft sold a million copies in five days. It's now Ooh. officially okay to be totally jealous of Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> It's past the point of where it's like, oh, cool, where it's like, just, god fucking damn it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, Tommy, I see you hiding. You're supposed to be on cam. Yeah, What's up with so that? The camera dies a lot because I broke it. Like, uh, well, number one, so there's the one that's built into the Mac, the little iMac on the top, and I shined a laser pointer in that one until it was broken. And then uh, now that iMac is under the desk because I wanted to get it off the desk, so it's just pointing at nothing. And then the nice. other camera, I think I dropped a bunch of times, so it just, it goes on and goes off every once in a while, so. Okay. <laughs> oh, apologies. I, I tried to get it back on, but it, it, it wasn't having that. I'll, I'll try again right now. I'm sorry, that would freak me out, like the turrets in Portal. I see you, bam, your camera's on. I, I <laughs> yeah. couldn't deal with it. That's how, that's, that's how I catch my prey. Yeah, it's not <laughs> showing up anymore. You look, uh, it's okay. You look like a loading screen. Yeah, well, it's, it's showing <laughs> something. Yeah, it's, it's, showing, it's showing the inside of the cabinet that the iMac is in. Nice. <laughs> it's a, an artistic statement, I see. Yeah. You're looking good. I could put my hand in front of it, kind of. Look, oh, see? See, you can see. <laughs> I just see black, dude. It's like kind of kind of blue, a little dome. Oh, oh, that's, that's, that's a drawer slide right there. <laughs> <Drawer> slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other news of the week you want to share, Tommy? Um, no. No. All right, Edmund, your turn. Oh, man, news. That pertains to video games? It can be anything that you'd like to share. What has been interesting? Is there, Do you have any news? Is there anything interesting that's happened this week? Danielle is going to share some news. Oh, yeah, anything. Any news? <laughs> been an uneventful week. Facebook IPO comes out on like Friday. Huh? Yeah. Then y'all learn how to play magic. There's some news for Oh, me. congratulations. Yeah. It's been a while since I've played. Are these real magic cards or you pirate them too? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? This is real. This is totally okay. That's how they do magic cards. That's how they make them. Look, they print them out on a sheet and then they cut them. It's Oh, it's an uncut sheet. I got it oh, off okay. eBay. Yeah, no, uh, she's playing with real cards. This is just yeah. for my cube. <laughs> I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars on these cards. I just want to play with them. I'm not playing in tournaments, people. That's don't true. Report me to Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> and I don't really have any news. This has been a. Um, the finding like the details. Come out television that. Yeah, but you didn't put them up yet. Yeah, but I will. Yeah. We have them There's up no yet. news. There's no news. Okay, let's move to more stuff. Okay, questions for you, uh, Edmund and Tommy as well. Is this involves you? Um, and Edmund has his own Wikipedia section, which Tommy's also on. That's pretty impressive, having your own Wikipedia article. And you guys are known for a careful level design and exacting standards of play, and it makes things very challenging in game. Uh, is that what it says? Yes, it it says something similar to that. Yeah. It, but it's difficult to discover your actual gaming history as a child because I read things that are just clearly not true. <laughs> Curled up in a corner playing with a stink bug. I don't know. Strange <laughs> things about that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what drew you to become a designer and a programmer and what were your games or your, as background as a child? Let's go first with you, Edmund. Um, I had an Atari when I, I got an Atari when I was like, seven i think and i played a shit ton of video games um i spent most of my time alone so you know it was either drawing video games or just exploring out and wherever um and 
when I turned nine. I was like the last kid on my block to get a uh, NES. Um, but once I did, that was the end of it, and it became like a thing of legend. Uh, quite literally, like Legend of Zelda became like my life, and kind of obsessed with random secrets and games and stuff like that. And um, it always just became a, it was a major part of my life. But I didn't. I don't think in your kid you consider it as much of a part of your life. It's just, of course, kids play video games. Hmm. Um, but I was one of those kids that would like. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you this, Tommy, but in, in sixth grade, um, we had to do reports, and um, I did a report on Mortal Kombat. And, and <laughs> Really? And, was the yeah. subject you were supposed to be covering? I don't know, but <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't video games. <laughs> but I did a report on Mortal Kombat, and like, um, I, I wish I still had it. I actually still have some of the, I had like a little cover for it. So and I, I wasn't really uh, keen on writing or anything else like that, so I would fill my reports with like drawings and stuff. And I had collages of like all the fatalities from all these different magazines, like just collages of fatalities. And that was my report. I had like two pages of, of information and then like three pages of, of collages of like Goro and everybody else. And, and uh, yeah, that was quite awesome. And I was that kind of kid. <laughs> what yeah, did you was, get on that project? What was your grade? I don't. I didn't get good grades. <laughs> I still have this. I still have this one report. It's pretty funny. Um, I was also obsessed with Ren and Stimpy, so it was a family report, and it was just like you know, write about your family history and whatever else. And uh, anyone else even seen this? This is completely for real. About five pages of information and about ten pages of me pausing <laughs> Ren and Stimpy on on the VCR and drawing what I'm seeing. No reason. It had nothing to do with the report. But it was like 10 pages, every, between each of these pages, there's like two pages, or on the backs too, of just Ren and Stimpy drawings. <laughs> yeah, no, and there, were com there, were, there was a comment at the end, it was like, good art. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It was my family report, Ren and Stimpy. There you go. <laughs> they were... uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, though. But yeah, I, uh, I did my own shit and liked my own stuff, and, um, but I never really thought I'd make video games. Uh, not at all. Okay, Tommy, how about you? Um, yeah, I just got a Nintendo when I was, I think it was in 88. And I just played every video game, and me and my friends would always have lists of games that we beat, and then compare which games that we did. Like, me and my friend John, we, we would, we would, put together these lists and be like, oh, I've beaten Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3 and Zelda 2. And he's like, well, I've beaten Zelda 1. And we just kind of go back and forth like that. So it was always a big part of my life. Then I'd get on the phone with the same friend, John, and we would, uh, we, we, we were really obsessed with the, the rift between Genesis and Super Nintendo. And we thought that in a perfect world, they would be one. And we, we, we tried to design, like, what if what if Sonic and Mario had a game together? Uh, ours was a lot better than Sonic versus Mario Olympics or whatever that crap that they put out with. <laughs> Olympics. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was always like huge part of my life, and and uh, my dad taught me to program kind of at a young age when I was about eleven, and from there I just kept programming, kept making stuff. Uh, we didn't. <laughs> we lived. We. We lived in the mountains, so we didn't have internet. I was like the last of my friends to have internet, but I knew about it because I'd go over to their house and go on chat rooms and stuff. Uh -huh. So uh, I programmed the chat room that was just, it was just me. But what it would do is you would type in stuff and then it would read the response and then it would, it would type, it would like give you messages back. And it was like, it's like a forever alone chat in a way. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was cool because all I was doing is like, in a way, it was like, it, it was a it was a type of AI project that I was writing where, mm -hmm. where it would actually analyze in what I typed and then it would it would send me back a message that was somewhat somewhat relevant.